Hey y'all, my name is Martin Malilu and I'm a librarian with LA County Library. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about batik art and then we're going to do an activity that's a loose interpretation of that art style. Batik art is a form of dyeing and printing on cloth that has origins in Indonesia. Um, it's been around for a long, long time. Um, no one really has a solid idea of when it came into uh, being, like when the first person who did it, did it. Um, but we do know that it is primarily women uh, who have participated in this art form. Um, and we do know that it is popular in Indonesia or it originated in Indonesia because uh, the materials needed to make it happen are easily found in Indonesia. Uh, they would need uh, wax, so they would use beeswax often, um, cotton, and you also need access to plants that are used to create dyes. And all of those things uh, are found in Indonesia. Uh, while this art form and this uh, cloth is worn by all sorts of people, uh, some colors and patterns are reserved for specific people or times or uh, activities. Uh, for example, maroon is specifically used uh, by courts uh, in some parts of Indonesia. The process of making batik uh, cloth and batik art uh, is done by uh, taking a piece of cloth, laying some wax down on it where you don't want the dye to go, and then uh, dyeing the entire cloth. And because you have that wax barrier, the dye does not seep into the cloth and dye the cloth where that wax is. Um, so it's kind of like reverse painting almost. Um, it's just kind of the opposite of what we would normally think of doing if we want to create uh, an art piece. If you're interested in learning more about batik art or Indonesia, I do encourage you to check out our Asian Pacific Resource Center. Um, I am showing you how to access that here online. Um, they have a lot of information online uh, that you can check out and uh, learn a little bit more about what batik art is and uh, how it's used in Indonesia. For our take on batik art, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a paintbrush. You're going to need some water. You're going to need some tape. I'm going to use duct tape. Uh, pretty much any tape will work. You're gonna need a glue stick. You want a glue stick and not liquid glue. Um, we're gonna need a good amount of it, so make sure that you have a good amount of that. You're gonna need fabric paint. You want at least two colors, okay? Um, you're gonna need fabric. I'm only gonna make mine this big. You can make yours bigger or smaller. It depends on how big you make your stencil. So I'm not gonna go over how to make a stencil, um, but uh, you will want a stencil. I am just going to use this little geometric pattern and you're going to need a piece of cardboard. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tape our fabric down to the cardboard. All right, so I'm going to use my duct tape here. And I'm going to All right, I've got my fabric taped down. Uh, so it's pretty flat. It's a little little wonky right here but it's fine um so i have this and now i'm going to take my paintbrush i want it to be as dry as possible so i haven't gotten it wet yet it still is a little wet from the last time i used it but uh it's dry enough um and i'm going to take my fabric paint and i'm going to just paint a base coat um you want to keep it relatively thin um because the thicker it is the longer it's going to take to dry um and also fabric paint is prone to cracking. Um, so keep it thin and uh, it'll dry a lot faster. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. All right, so I have a nice uh, even coat of purple on there. Um, I didn't go all the way to the edges, but I think it's good enough. Um, so I am, it's a pretty thin layer too. Um, so keep that in mind, you want it to be pretty thin. Um, so now I'm going to clean off my paintbrush and while this is drying I'm also going to um, after I get all the paint out of my paintbrush 
I'm also going to set my paintbrush to dry. So I don't want to leave it in the water um, because I want it to be as dry as possible because that just makes the paint dry so much faster if there's less water in it. All right, so I'm gonna leave that and uh, we'll let this dry for an hour or so and come back to it. All right, so my paint is pretty dry right now. Um, so now I'm gonna take my stencil and I'm going to put it on here and I'm gonna glue, I'm gonna apply glue all over that. All right, so all over the inside of the stencil. And then I'm gonna take my stencil off. And this is replicating the waxing that the people of Indonesia would do. Um, they would apply the wax to here. Um, and then when we put the next coat of paint on there, uh, and then we wash it, the glue will prevent this purple, or will allow the purple to show through. So for now, the next step, we're gonna put this here, glue over this. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, I put a bunch of glue in there um, and it's pretty thick. You, this is, you want the glue to be thick. Well, you want the paint to be thin, you want the glue to be thick. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna peel this off and we're just gonna let this dry like this. All right, so my glue is dry. Now I'm gonna take my second color and I'm going to paint over this whole thing with my second color. And again, if you want to use a thin coat, you wanna use a dry paintbrush. It is especially important for this part that your paintbrush is dry because with the glue stick, um, we are using a washable glue stick. Um, so you, it will come off with the water, but we don't want it to come off yet. So make sure your paintbrush is super dry, you got your paint, and let's do a thin coat. All right, I did my green over the purple. Um, and in doing this, one thing I did realize um, is that uh, I should have done my lighter color before my darker color, but that's okay. Um, I've done this a few times to test it out and I did do my lighter color before I did my darker color and the other ones and it turned out great, but we'll see how this one turns out. Um, so I did the purple and then the green. I've got the green on there and uh, we're gonna let that dry and uh, then we'll see what happens. All right, once it's dry, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take off the cloth and we're going to uh, wash it. Uh, so I don't recommend washing it in a washer. Um, I do recommend doing it by hand um, because the paint is probably not great for your washing machine. Um, especially since we're trying to get the paint off of it. Um, but I recommend washing it in a strainer in the sink. That way you're not sending chunks of paint down into the sewer system, um, we're only putting water down there and then you can clean out the strainer and throw the paint in the trash. Um, so I'm gonna give this a quick wash. I'm probably gonna have to scrub a little bit, pick a little bit out the glue parts. Basically, we're just trying to get that glue off. Um, so anything that is on top of the glue will also come off and it'll leave us with a nice little print. So let's go ahead and do that and then I'll come back. All right, so mine's been uh, thoroughly washed and dried and here is the final product. Um, it's a little clumpy in some spots. I could probably give it another little wash um, and I was able to just kind of peel off some of the glue as well. Um, but overall, I think it turned out well. Um, if you wanted to do more layers, you would just, um, before you washed it, uh, you would just put your stencil down again and put more glue on it and then paint a whole nother color on top of it. Um, but I just stuck with the two colors, um, but you can do as many as you want. Um, and it depends on how big your patch is and how big your uh, stencil is too. So uh, yeah, this is a kind of a loose interpretation of batik art. Um, so don't forget to check out the resource center, the Asian Pacific Resource Center. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed uh, making uh, your batik art today. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to stay updated on our latest videos. Uh, bye for now.